Honda is one of the oldest car companies in India and its prospects here have been based recently on models like the Amaze, WRV and the City. While these are great offerings in their own right, some have perished and some survive. For Honda Elevate SUV though, it is not a matter of survivability but about thriving. Thriving in a fertile playfield called mid-size SUV segment, one that has a lot many players and therefore intense competition but enormous opportunities too. You're watching HD Auto, I'm Shubhadeep and today we are in Udaipur to take the first drive test review of the much, much awaited Honda Elevate SUV. Is Honda late to the SUV game? Does this SUV tick the right boxes? Does it pack a drive punch while standing uber cool? Cool though is not perhaps how I would describe the exterior styling of the Elevate. Solid, planted and muscular? Sure. The front face itself has a very muscular bold appeal. Curtsy this really massive front grille complete with the large Honda logo on the front. Right above it is this large trademark chrome bar and flanking this really solid grille on either side are sleek DRL units, LED headlights and at the bottom you also get the fog light units which in the shape of this whole face is slightly small. I also really like the bonnet design as well. It's got a nice height to it and the character line adds to the muscular appeal of this vehicle move to the side of the vehicle and the proportions become evident. Now over at the side, the cladding and the slightly flared wheel arches give this SUV, visually speaking, its SUV credentials. The Elevate comes in 16 inch wheels and the one that you see here is a top model and therefore the 17 inch alloy wheels are what this particular model is fitted with. There's nothing overly dramatic about the alloy design and yet the dual tone treatment gives it a very neat appearance. This particular color that you see is absolutely brand new. It's an orange shade, but if this is not to your liking, then Honda is offering as many as seven single tone and three dual tone color options as well. This one, as you can clearly see, is a dual tone with a black roof. The roof rail that you see here is in a shade of gray and there is silver treatment on the door handles. The ORVMs are nice and large, come fitted with cameras on both sides. Very, very useful when you switch on the turn indicator. Gives you a feed of the side back traffic on the MID display. But the biggest highlight from the side of the Elevate is its really generous ground clearance. Over 200 mm of ground clearance gives it a lot of visual boasting rights and should help it in less than perfect road conditions as well. The rear profile too is rather uncluttered and sports a raked window and wraparound LED tail lights on either side. There is a spoiler on top, brake light just under it and a grey skid plate at the bottom. But how much cargo area is behind this frame? The Elevate gets a generous cargo area. In fact, at 458 litres, the cargo space inside this SUV is the best. It's the largest against its rivals. So quite a few large bags can easily be planted here and the fact that the rear seats can be folded in 60-40 ratio means that uh, passengers and the owner of the vehicle has even more options to store their luggage. But cargo space is great. What does the Elevate offer in terms of features and in that sense alone, does it really take the fight to the competition? Honda has stuck to its strengths in the cabin as well, offering a rather pleasing interior one that isn't fancy or glitzy as some of its Korean rivals. Depending on personal tastes and preferences, this can be a great or not such a good thing. Now, the feature list also inside the Honda Elevate is one that's mostly updated rather than brand new. That's apart from this 10.25 inch freestanding infotainment screen, which is leaps and miles ahead of what the other Honda models have so far offered in India. The display is crisp, it's IPS, the touch responsiveness is fantastic and the control over the glare is much better than what you get on the screen inside even the city. 
Apart from this, you also get a semi-digital driver display which puts out all the drive-related information as well as the ADAS information that is required. So this is mostly large and very, very easy to read. Is it all digital? Could it have been all digital? Well, um, for those of you who prefer a more modern cutting edge feature list, then yeah, maybe Honda could have offered that. But overall, the layout of the dash itself is also pretty pleasing. It's got a lot of hard plastics, yes, but you also have this nice soft touch finish in beige brown with what seems to be good quality stitchings right from that end to this end. Right in the middle, you have rectangular shaped AC vents. You have buttons for the HVAC controls and the flow of the center console is also very, very pleasing to um, the eye. Now on the center console, there is a dedicated space where you can park your smartphone. And interestingly, for all compatible smartphones, you can also wirelessly charge devices. So just place the phone here and the wireless charging starts automatically. But very interestingly, there is a physical button to switch off wireless charging as well. And this can be very crucial if you are someone who's very, very careful against overheating or overcharging your device. Now, if you do not have a phone that supports wireless phone charging, then of course you can make use of the two conventional size USB ports and a 12 volt charging socket as well. Just below the wireless charging section are two small cup holders. You get a nicely designed uh, layout for the center console. The brown finish in hard plastic makes its way back into the center console. And there is a piano black finish given next to the gear shift lever as well. In terms of storage space, you get conventional size uh, bottle holders on all the four doors. You get a decent size uh, front glove box, although the glove box seems a little flimsy when you open and even when you shut it shuts with a clunk. So maybe there was a little room for improvement on that count. Look above and you get a sunroof because, well, sunroof are the popular choice. So. This one is a conventional size. Could Honda have actually been even more generous and equipped the Elevate with a panoramic sunroof? Well, just for pure bragging rights, they could have done it, but they haven't. In terms of some of the features that many of the Elevate's rivals offer, but this one doesn't, well, I solely miss the fact that the front two seats don't get seat ventilation. There is no electronically adjustable driver's seat, power adjustable driver's seat functionality and things which add a bit of more glitz and glamour, say for example ambient lighting, is also missing from the Elevate. Not that the feature list otherwise inside the Elevate is bare by any standards and what it loses out in terms of features vis-a-vis -vis its rivals, the Elevate more than makes up for it with a very very generous back seat space. There is a slight floor hump on the floor bed, but even then, for three passengers, the Elevate is perhaps your best bet as far as comfortable journeys on mid-size SUVs are concerned. The seats here too are decently well cushioned. If there are just two passengers on the back, then you can make use of the central armrest as well. And the decently large windows at the back further let the elements interplay inside the cabin. The Elevate makes use of the same 1.5 litre iVTEC petrol engine that does duty on the new city sedan. This engine is mated to a 6-speed manual or the one that we're driving first up is the one with CVT unit. The Elevate is powered by a 1.5 litre petrol motor and for those who have in the past driven a Honda or currently also drive one, well the Elevate on the move would be a very familiar car. But for those who've never driven a Honda well, this engine is part peppy, but a larger part moderate. So there is a sense of reliability that you get from uh, the engine, the motor. There is a sense of purpose when you're going through straight roads, through declines. There is more than enough power to get a move on. The CVT transmission deserves every accolade that comes its way. But that is up until there are uphill stretches because for all its strengths, the CVT does show its weaknesses as well when there are uphill inclines where the engine begins to definitely groan quite a lot. There is quite a sense of reluctance to making the climbs. And while of course you can make use of the paddle shifters that exist in this car, uh, also exist in some of the other Honda models, and while those paddle shifters are there and can be engaged, well, how many of us actually make use of it uh, on a regular basis or when required? But while there is engine grown on uphill climbs with the CVT transmission, there 
is a firm control on NBH levels otherwise, which I feel is going really well with the premium appeal of this vehicle that Honda wants to underline. A nicely weighted steering means that you will get a decent amount of feedback at high speeds and yet these curves and turns on the hilly stretches outside of Udaipur are quite easy for the Elevate to negotiate. The reliability, the sense of direction and yes, this car has a turning radius of just 5.2 meters despite quite a significant wheelbase is well, quite remarkable as well. Honda has also mostly always aced the suspension and the Elevate was never going to be any different. On broken patches of roads, the Elevate fares reasonably well and that really should be something that complements the overall comfort levels that the Elevate has anyway on offer, both in terms of space as well as seat cushioning. The 6-speed 80 inside the Elevate surely gives more control to you and the long reach of the 3rd, 4th and even the 5th gear helps with the pulling power. But the lack of any eagerness will continue to put off the more eager, enthusiastic drivers. Could Honda consider a turbo variant? It isn't considering one now, but it really should. Now, while the CVT inside the Elevate offers a lot of convenience, much like automatics of any iteration generally tend to do, I'm actually, for a change, very curious about the six-speed manual transmission that is also on offer with the Elevate. Switch to the manual transmission and you obviously get complete control over the gear shifts. The throws may not be as slick as on some of the Korean models, but are still fairly decent. The reach of the third and fourth gears in particular are long and impressive. But there is only so much that the gearbox can do when a lot of pulling power is the need of the R. Once again, the Elevate impresses with its genial ride quality, but once again, the need to push forward and to do so on climbs exposes the Achilles heel. But the MT has one big ace up its proverbial sleeve. It is the only manual transmission model in the market which also offers ADAS technology or at least Honda's version of it, called Honda Sensing. Traditional ADAS systems make use of cameras and radars, but the Honda models rely on a solitary front cam, while there are several highlights of Honda Sensing inside the Elevate as well. The lane keep assist, forward collision warning, and mitigation, and even adaptive cruise control are what we tested and found to be on point. Apart from ADAS, the blind side view camera is carried forward from the city and is as helpful as ever. The Elevate is a true blue Honda product. It's got a spacious cabin, solidly planted looks, a decent engine, and of course, Honda sensing technology as well. It is brand new, and yet perhaps a year or two old in the segment that it is competing in. But priced aggressively, the Honda Elevate has a lot of potential to unsettle its rivals in its segment. The launch is scheduled around the festive season and we're extremely curious to know how well Honda will price this particular model. What do you think the pricing of the Honda Elevate should be? Do let us know and also let us know what do you make of the car and the review. As always, do check out our full in-depth written review as well in this episode. And for now, that's all the time we have. As always, drive safe, stay safe.